Widespread port shutdowns and factory closures in China are threatening to push already stressed global supply chains over the edge. Chaos is fast spreading at Chinese ports as new lockdown mandates have started to be put in place after another wave of virus cases has been confirmed. China's strict health policies are having a major impact on the ongoing container crisis, given that millions of containers are still sitting outside the country's ports, waiting to get unloaded or filled with goods to be shipped overseas. One of the nation's busiest ports, Ningbo, is under partial lockdown order, which is creating a nightmare scenario for the logistics sector, worsening disruptions and supply chain blockages, according to local sources. The Chinese government has also imposed a 14-day lockdown at Zhenhai, located in one of the six districts in Ningbo. The district is home to a large petrochemical base that is essential to global trade. Local officials said that all enterprises not related to virus control or deemed crucial to the public will be shut down, and that petrochemical producers will have to reduce output. That news comes as global oil reserves have just hit an all-time low, meaning that oil prices are likely to skyrocket in the coming weeks. The nearby city of Shaoxing is suspending factory operations as well. Hundreds of publicly listed companies in Hangzhou, the province's capital and largest city, have also released statements announcing they had suspended production. One of China's leading provinces in terms of GDP and exports, Zhejiang was forced to temporarily close several factories. According to Zhao Pongxing, senior China strategist at ANZ Research, the shutdown of Zhejiang factories will impact on the supply chains of various sectors, especially fiber and textiles. The measures are aggravating port congestion all across the country, just as operations started to be resumed last month. One Chinese executive working with a UK-based logistics company warned that the rising number of infections may lead to prolonged shutdowns at Ningbo and some other ports in China, which may take congestion and cargo backlogs to a whole new level. This is only the beginning. The first quarter of 2022 is gonna be a complete wreck, he added. According to Lars Jensen, CEO of Vespucci Maritime, the Ningbo shutdown clearly illustrates to the rest of the world that there remains a high risk of further supply chain disruption from virus outbreaks in China. The nation's measures are so inflexible that thousands of maritime workers are having to wait 49 days before entering the Ningbo port and in the northern city of Shenyang. Arriving overseas travelers face a 56-day quarantine. A recent Bloomberg report also noted that China has completely banned crew changes for foreign seafarers, and even ships that had their crews changed out elsewhere, they need to wait at least seven weeks before they can enter Chinese ports. The government's zero-tolerance policy has also put half a million people under stay-at-home mandates in China's main industrial and export hub on the East Coast. One example of how draconian these policies can be is what happened during Halloween night, when 30,000 people were locked inside Shanghai Disneyland after just one virus case was detected. Many sources on the shipping industry said the new port shutdowns are likely to bring a repeat of the shipping disruption experienced earlier this year, when the nation's key ports, Ningbo and Yantian, suspended all export operations for weeks. That event has contributed to the aggravation of shortages worldwide, and as several nations continue to struggle with empty shelves, including the UK and the US, the scarcity of consumer products may hit its worst level in early 2022. Guy Platten, Secretary General of the International Chamber of Shipping, said in an interview with Bloomberg, China's restrictions are causing knock-on effects. Any restrictions to ship operations have an accumulative impact on the supply chain 
and cause logistic disasters and prolonged delivery delays, he continued. Another Chinese exporter who preferred to stay in anonymity told Bloomberg that the fast increase in infections caused by the new variant can further disrupt the ocean freight industry by triggering higher demand for PPE kits and masks, in turn leading to higher freight rates. The exporter said the traditional agricultural trade season also starts in January, and a simultaneous rise in PPE shipments could choke the system further. New data released by monitoring firm Vessels Value has shown that freight rates from China to nearby Asian countries have already increased tenfold in the past few weeks. Freight rates for the U.S. West Coast surged to nearly $35,000 last week due to a shortage of shipping containers at Asian ports, with approximately 350 ships waiting to dock at Chinese ports to either load or unload goods. Almost 4 million containers remain stranded at sea, and as shipping prices climb, some Chinese manufacturers have actually stopped exporting goods to the United States. Rick Carl, who used to run a factory in Shenzhen, said that the shipping prices are rising far beyond what is profitable. His factory has shut down the production of computer accessories like USB hubs. He said, when the cost of shipping something is nearly five times the cost of my product, I can't possibly absorb it, he said. But when you pass that on to the consumer, who is going to pay $30 for a USB hub that originally cost less than $10? Inflated costs for shipping and ocean freight are inflaming the export crisis in China and causing severe import delays all over the globe. Industry executives are warning U.S. retailers to brace for inventory shortfalls, significant price increases, longer production times, shortages of materials, and delays in order delivery. Higher shipping costs are also adding to overall inflationary pressures for the global economy in 2022. Unfortunately, this means that if consumer prices are already nearing absurd levels right now, Next year, price hikes are going to be even more shocking. To make matters worse, it seems like the container shortage is leading the Chinese government to take some extreme action to tackle this crisis. A new CNN report highlighted that container ships are disappearing from industry tracking systems once they arrive in Chinese waters, creating yet another headache for the global supply chain, stresses the report. China's growing isolation from the rest of the world, along with a deepening mistrust of foreign influence, may be to blame. As millions of containers are getting stuck at western ports, once they come back to the Chinese coast, shipping companies are turning off shipping traffic systems to divert vessels to other Asian ports ahead of Christmas and the Chinese Lunar New Year, analysts say. Shipping data companies are typically able to track ships around the world because they're equipped with an automatic identification system, AIS, a transceiver. This system tracks ships as they send information, including position, speed, course, and name, to stations that are based along coastlines using high-frequency radio. However, this is not happening in the world's second largest economy. Over the past three weeks, the number of vessels sending signals from China has fallen by roughly 90%, according to data from Vessels Value. With Christmas right at the corner, this loss of critical information from mainland China could cause severe log jams in Asian ports and create more problems for the shipping industry. Georgios Hatsimanalis, media strategist for marine traffic, pointed out that the loss of minute-by-minute -minute ship data from China will have a great impact on the supply chain, since companies may lose crucial information about ship docking, unloading, and leaving times. The global supply chain is already under great stress, he added. It doesn't need another factor to make it more difficult. Meanwhile, on the United States coast, the cargo ship logjam has never been worse. Despite claims from officials that the number has dwindled in recent weeks, 
an analysis published by the firm Marine Tracker exposed that the number of ships stuck outside the California coast is still at an all-time high. The analysis also shown that dozens of ships have been waiting to berth since October, leaving thousands of sailors stranded at sea as they wait to be allowed on dry land. The contradiction in the official number of ships comes as a result of a new policy recently introduced by shipping trade groups that encourage incoming vessels to wait out in the open ocean amid the worsening logjam rather than at the congested ports. Marine tracker data revealed that hundreds of ships are sitting more than 100 miles away from the California coast, nearing the coast of Mexico or even Taiwan. The impact of our domestic port crisis, the ongoing container shortage, and the new Chinese restrictions are disproportionately hitting American farmers who are having an extremely difficult time in getting their goods out of the country to foreign buyers. In a recent statement, Representative Dusty Johnson explained that the situation is leading to the destruction of millions of dollars in value. Johnson argued that Asian ocean carriers are unfairly discriminating against American cargo. He noted that shipping companies offload foreign goods in U.S. ports and then simply head back to Asia so they can bring more goods back to the U.S. rather than taking the time to fill up with American goods to sell abroad. Unfortunately, because it's an oligopoly, you've got to take it or leave it if you're an American agricultural shipper, he added. The terms often say that liquidated damages for you cancelling a container is $100. Well, there can be $100,000 worth of goods in each container. Illinois congressional candidate Esther Joy King told in an interview with Fox Business that several farmers in her district are going bankrupt due to their inability to export what they have produced, in addition to soaring farm equipment and chemical costs. That is going to have a major impact on next year's domestic agricultural production, she stressed. The U.S. food industry has already been struggling with shortages of workers, drivers, and rampant inflation that has driven up the price of energy, feed, and fertilizer. Consumer food prices in the United States have just jumped to their highest levels in nearly 40 years. Last Friday, the Bureau of Labor Statistics reported that food prices have risen an additional 6% in November, the highest month-to-month -month spike since 1982, with beef prices leading the rise, facing a dramatic 20.9% increase. Needless to say, this is very bad news for American consumers who are seeing their purchasing power sharply collapse as inflation runs wild. We're effectively headed to a very painful winter that'll bring food insecurity back to millions of American families. Sadly, we have not seen the worst of shortages and price increases just yet. Now, more than ever, we should get ready for the challenges that are coming for us. A perfect storm is on the horizon, and all of our problems are about to get out of control.